Hi, and welcome back to the WellBe Show and Podcast. I am so excited to have my guest today, Whitney Tingle. She is the co-founder and co-CEO of Sakara Life, a wellness company based in New York City that is most famous for their signature meal delivery program. Whitney, thank you so much for being here today. Hi, thanks so much for having me. I'm so happy we were able to find the time to do this. Yes, me too. And you might notice that is the beautiful Saqqara office kitchen um, in New York City where so much of their amazing meals and supplements and all kinds of other nutrition products are created. It is a Zoom background because that's not where I am right now, but I just, I miss working out at that space and feeling the energy there. So I use it as my, my background. I think it's the most attractive Zoom background I've seen thus far. And I've seen a lot of Zoom backgrounds in this crazy time. So I can see why you use it. It's very refreshing and light and uh, reminds people, you know, what a beautiful kitchen should look like. So I asked Whitney to come on the show and podcast today to tell her incredible story. She'll obviously be talking about creating Sakara Life with her co-founder, Danielle, but mostly to share her inspiration for uh, creating that company, which came from a chronic health issue and uh, a journey that you know really showed her how much food and diet plays a role in her whole health and really treating her body holistically. So Whitney, will you share that story, kind of where you were and what you did and how it got you to co-founding Sakara? Yeah. And we always say that Sakara really didn't start out as a business. It started out as finding a solution to our own needs. So just like you said, uh, Danielle and I both found ourselves in our early 20s struggling with health conditions. Uh, we were childhood friends, grew up in Sedona, Arizona, where I currently am right now, even though it looks like I'm in my Saqqara office in New York City. And we each moved to New York for different reasons. I started on my path to work in finance. I wanted to work on Wall Street, and Danielle moved out to New York to study medicine. And we both found ourselves really hitting rock bottom together at the same time. Um, I had been battling with cystic acne for majority of my life since um, puberty, really, and I had just tried about everything you could possibly think of to try and fix it. Um, I had done rounds and rounds of antibiotics, which knowing now what we know about the microbiome, um, I'm sad <laughs> that I, I went down that path, but, you know, doctors at that time, they didn't, they didn't know about the microbiome and they didn't know about the damage that, uh, chronic use of anti antibiotics can do to the body. Um, they thought that they were helping me and that acne was just caused by bacteria on your skin. I tried lots of different types of lasers, you know, ones that would remove layers off of my face and would have, you know, weeks of downtime, um, treatments that were used for cancer patients. I tried ev everything you could think of because I had big red painful cysts all over my face and skin is something, you know, it's, you wear it on your face. I would try to hi hide it with makeup, but I couldn't hide it. Um, and it affected my confidence, my mental health, my, how I showed up at work, um, showed up in my relationships, in my dating life, in every aspect of my life. I was really desperate to try and find something to fix it. I even went to the lengths of trying Accutane, which is a really serious drug. And I think a lot of people they think because it's passed by the FDA and, and doctors prescribe it, that it's safe, but it's a really serious drug. So along with the Accutane, they put me on birth control and had me sign an agreement saying that if I were to get pregnant, I would have an abortion because the baby would come out with birth defects. Like that's serious. Uh, and... I had a friend who took Accutane and had suicidal ideations, which she then found out later is a listed side effect and ended up 
uh, going off of it as a result, but was just stunned that her physician, prescribing physician, hadn't really thoroughly gone through that as one of the side effects that could happen. Yeah, and she they was put me terrified by that. They put me on Prozac as well oh, because of that, just to prevent any type of suicidal thoughts or or anything because it is a possible side effect. And so, you know, here I am on top of the Accutane, I'm taking synthetic hormone birth control, taking SSRI drugs, you know, it really dries you out. Like the Accutane is supposed to go in, it's supposed to shrink your oil glands from the inside. And when you're a teenager or when you're in your early twenties, you're not thinking about what that oil does for your skin. You're thinking, I have overactive oil glands, I need to get rid of this oil. But that oil later in life is what keeps your skin staying moisturized, keeping plump, stay, you know, reducing wrinkles, all those things that we want. And we don't think about, well, why is my skin having overactive oil glands in the first place? Or why are my hormones out of balance? Um, or anything of those questions. And I was seeing dermatologists once, once I got to New York City and I was in this world of Wall Street working crazy hours and after work, it was part of the culture to go out and have drinks and have appetizers, you know, fried foods of all sorts. And we were entertaining clients and doing business development and that type of thing. And all of that had an effect on my body and my skin as well. And I wasn't realizing it quite yet at that time. You know, this was over a decade ago, but my skin was really at an all time worst. So I thought, okay, well, New York City has the best of the best of everything. There has to be somebody here that will cure me. You know, I'm reading all these glossy magazines and seeing all these names of dermatologists with their Upper East Side doctor's office. And so I just went one by one to go and see them to see if somebody had a different answer for me, something that I hadn't tried yet, some solution, magic cure for me. And one by one, they just wanted to write me another prescription for either another mega round of antibiotics, which at that point, I was starting to learn about uh, gut health, and I didn't want to do more antibiotics. Or the other option was they were handing me prescriptions for another round of Accutane. And I didn't want to do that again. You know, along, also along with Accutane, you have your blood drawn every week or every other week to make sure that your liver is still healthy because it can also affect your liver. I mean, getting a blood test every week or two is pretty intense for somebody also working in finance and just trying to like live a normal life. I mean, not to mention all of the other side effects, like that's very serious. Yeah, it's a lot. And so I just had this a voice inside of me that at that point was just shouting, like, don't do it. It's not the answer. You have to go inside and figure out what is the root cause that is creating this acne on my skin. The acne, you know, it was like this just light bulb went off. Like the acne is not the problem. The acne is the symptom of something bigger going on inside and figure out what that is. So Danielle was kind of at her moment of rock bottom. She had been a chronic yo-yo dieter for most of her life. And um, after doing a cleanse, a 21 day cleanse with a seven day water fast and raw food, um, ended up really sick and in the hospital. And when she came out, we both, it was this aha moment of, we need to figure out what does true health and true nutrition look like. And it wasn't for anybody else. It was for ourselves. We needed to figure it out so that we could survive so that we weren't going to extremes to try and fix our bodies, but heal ourselves and heal our bodies and work with nature in order to get the results that we're looking for in, from, in a healthy way. And it sounds like at this point, you had sort of begun to put the pieces together that your skin and nutrition were connected or, and also learn more about the gut and how these things were coming Yeah. To we're just starting to learn about it. And um, Danielle actually pivoted her track at that point and decided to go to nutrition school. 
we just started diving into the research and information, anything we could get our hands on. So looking into the microbiome and gut health and epigenetics and how what you eat and your surroundings can affect which genes are turned on and off in your body. But then also looking at some of these more ancient healing modalities and these nutritional philosophies that have been around for thousands of years, things like Ayurveda, um, Taoism has their own food philosophy, uh, macrobiotics, and you know, a number of different um, food sciences, nutrition sciences, and pulled them together and saw that a, a lot of these different philosophies, even modern Western medicine was, was saying the same thing. And so we started to pull these threads together and said, okay, these are the things that we believe to be true, that we believe that makes sense. It's logical. You don't have to be a PhD or food scientist or anything for these things to make sense. Um, and just started putting it together into recipes and meals for ourselves. We said, we've tried so many things. We'd been, you know, paleo and vegan and vegetarian and raw food as an, you know, master cleanse diet and ever, you name it. We had tried it. I mean, I even was on this garlic cleanse, eating cloves of raw garlic and spoonfuls of coconut oil, trying to kill bacteria in my body. I mean, everything. Was that something you did with Danielle or that was skin trip? You know, you're trying to well, flush. I, w I was um, trying to, you know, from internally kill this bacteria. And I also was suffering from like yeast infections and anxiety and, you know, constipation, but I didn't realize that it was all the same thing. That, like, I was going to ask you that actually, when, when, when such a severe skin issue presents in people, just from my own work as a holistic patient advocate, I... I see a certain number of other symptoms come too. So I was going to ask you, like, did you have digestive issues or, you know, anxiety, depression, those usually come together or yeast infections or, you know, chronic UTIs and things like that. So, you know, that makes a whole lot of sense now that you. Yeah. That. And what it is, is just the bacteria in our bodies. Uh, they want to live symbiotically with us. They want to live in harmony with us. And I mean, there are trillions of microbes living in and on our bodies, helping us and, and supporting us. And they're essential to our health. But it's when we do certain things, we live certain lifestyles and have physical stressors, emotional stressors, um, that we can throw these bacterial worlds, you know, it's an ecosystem, we can throw it out of balance, and then have certain bacteria's come up, be a little too strong and other ones be a little too weak um, and just be out of balance. And that's when we can have those different types of infection flare-ups. But, you know, it, this is our immune system, right? And um, if we can get, get things back into balance, then our bodies will feel strong and be healthy. And so I, you know, I didn't know all of this at the time, just had a hunch, like growing up in Sedona, um, really being exposed to lots of different types of um, ways of thinking and healing modalities. Um, Danielle and I both just decided we were going to turn to food as our solution, turn back to mother nature uh, to heal ourselves. And so we went down this path of trying everything and studying everything and put together what we found, as I said before, found to make sense, to feel true, things that um, multiple sources were all, all agreeing on and started to pull these threads out. And what we put together, we call our nine pillars of nutrition. And we started to make recipes around them just for ourselves. And it was life-changing. I mean, for the first time in so long, inflammation started to go down. My digestive system started to work again. Um, everything just started to come back in to balance. And same for Danielle, like the inflammation in her body started to go down. Her digestive system started to work. And 
while she was looking for a different type of result, we both got so many different results that we both weren't looking for, but were just incredible benefits. Were you still working on Wall Street when you started to eat better? And how did that go? Because I know people say that to me a lot. It's it's really hard to continue to be consistent with any kind of dietary program, um, especially a healing one that can be a little bit restrictive at first, right? As the gut heals yeah. and then you can introduce some other things as well as the Wall Street culture. I you know, was living in New York in my twenties and had a lot of friends working in it too. So I know it's not exactly understanding of people making a lot of you know, special requests for gluten-free <laughs> this or that, right? Yeah, I, I mean, we would go out after work and I would order sparkling water and people would say, no, you're not allowed to get water. And they would say, just bring her a glass of wine or so, you know, something like that and order it for me anyway. And I said, I, I don't want it. You know, I can have a glass of wine here and there, but right now I, I just, I don't want to, I want to try and take care of myself. I want to try and heal myself and get myself to a place where, you know, I can have a glass of wine and it won't affect me. But right now I, I need to try this. I need to do this. And I, I was surrounded by a lot of people that were not supporters they didn't want me to live differently, I think partially because they didn't want to feel like they needed to change what they were doing, even though they saw it in themselves, that they were not healthy, that they had certain health problems that were directly correlated with the food and the lifestyle they were living, but they didn't want to be reminded of that. Uh, and so I had to you know, lean on my friends and my family, Danielle. My mother is very much into healthy lifestyle. She has a huge organic garden um, that she grows. So, and is just really ahead on a, a lot of it when it comes to health and nutrition. So just relying on them to remind me why I wanted it, what I'm doing it for, and um, yeah, help me stick to it. I'm amazed you made it through. Clearly you didn't end up working in that industry for a very long time because this, you know, solution for yourselves became something that ended up being a solution for many more. Um, and you had to commit full time to building that. Um, but I will say I have seen that so much in my experience with private clients, myself, friends, um, trying to finally change their health and do something that's so hard and not fun, you know, obviously restricting anything isn't fun. But then when also all this peer pressure or all this negativity, um, or trying to bring, bring them down, they're always scanning for anybody doing anything different. So if there's one person doing something different. It's like, mm, let's like, bring them down or like force them into our, whatever we're doing. Um, just kind of clannish behavior. I think that's probably evolutionary or, you know, in our biology or whatever it is, but it's really destructive for anybody trying to do something different, whether it's change their diet uh, and therefore change their health, or even just, you know, they really want to work on a new business idea. And so they're working at night and not going out and they're friends are making that very hard for them and stuff. So it takes a tremendous yeah. amount of perseverance. So you clearly have that. <laughs> well, I think that that is, you know, and Danielle and I joke about this, that like 60 plus percent of success is just stamina, just being able to persevere that, you know, you're going to get punched so many times from all different directions, whether it's, yeah, your friends or family or non-believers telling you that it's not going to happen or investors saying no, or having, you know, interactions with a, an unhappy client or whatever it might be, just willing to get back in it, to stand back up and to keep going. And um, as we were talking before, a little bit before we started recording, uh, I just think that mindset is so important and having a growth mindset and seeing challenges when they arise as an opportunity to learn and to grow um, and as something that is bound to happen. Life is often not going to go the way <laughs> that we have it planned. But, you know, if we can not let those things get us down, but help us to move forward, then that really is a huge piece in, I think both in work, in life, in health, all of it, right? 
Yes, 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 definitely. So a lot of people listen to the show that are at that point where they're either, they have some sort of a chronic diagnosis or they are trying to figure out a handful of symptoms similar to what you had. I mean, you could call it acne as a blanket term, but you were experiencing these different things and trying to put the pieces together of what, you know, the underlying root cause could be. So I am sure that people will be interested in this episode that have skin issues and feel like they've tried so much, right? And are thinking, okay, so, you know, what what can I eat? What can't I eat? And also speaking of perseverance and stamina, how long did it take of doing it consistently before you started to see some of that go away? Because I think where most people fail with health challenges is it didn't work by, you know, this sort of time expectation they had of two months or three months, or I've been cheating a little bit too much. So it's not really working. So I just can't, I just can't do it. And clearly I don't have what it takes to get there. So, you know, give us some insight into when that really started to change for you. Yeah. I'd have to say, you know, within the first couple of weeks, I think knowing what to look for first is really helpful. So before your skin starts to clear up, need to look for things like your digestive system starting to change. I think um, we have different vital signs in our bodies that show us how our health is. And our poop is one of those vital signs. You can look at it and you can tell a lot about your health. Is it, you know, hard? Is it pellety? You know, those might be signs that uh, if it's too hard, you need to be getting more hydration into your system. And when you're saying like, well, what should I be eating? Eating foods that contain a high water content. So fruits and vegetables, watermelon, leafy greens, like romaine lettuce, you know, melons and cucumbers. These are all foods that are over 90% water content. And when they go into your body, that hydration goes to hydrate your body and it helps to move things along. If you're eating foods that have a long shelf life, uh, in order to get that long shelf life, the water is taken out of the food because water is life, water creates life. And so you have to remove all of that so that bacteria and life doesn't grow on your shelf. So if you're eating like crackers and pretzels and chips and bread, and you live on foods that last a long time in your refrigerator, meats and uh, cured foods and cheeses and olives and pickles, and just these things that are made to last a long time, those are going to be things that suck hydration out of your body in order to be digested. And it can lead to things like constipation. If you're having um, diarrhea or, you know, different things like that, you, you just, you need to be looking at it and saying, okay, this is not a healthy poop and start working on your diet and your lifestyle in order to first change that because it all really does stem down to your digestive system, whether it's skin, whether it's rosacea, acne, psoriasis, eczema, it's all gut related. I talk about my acne. It's, it's like, it's an autoimmune condition. It's, I have a, a sensitive system and different things will, will trigger it. And I think oh, most people do, but a lot of people are okay walking around feeling just okay and would rather choose to live unhealthily than to make the changes that are needed to really heal themselves. And I'm, I'm happy that now we're like starting to have this whole movement where people are excited to live healthy and are excited to take care of themselves. And the healthy foods don't have to taste healthy like cardboard anymore. <laughs> they can taste really good. And there's lots of recipes and communities that you can be a part of like Sakara Life um, where you'll find people who support you in wanting to live a healthy life. Yeah, so it has a very rapid fan base um, from the people that I know who have been dedicated uh, users for years. And I really enjoyed mine. I am currently not living in an easy delivery zone, so I'm not <laughs> using it right now. But I know that the thought that goes into every single component of every single meal and supplement or snack or anything that um, you can buy from you guys is really much more thorough than anything I've seen 
out there. And it comes from all of this experimentation that you had to do at the onset of trying to figure out, you know, what was really going to kick this skin problem for you and, and digestive problem and anxiety, and, things like that. Right. And, you know, my big realization was I didn't have a skin problem. I had a gut problem and I needed to heal that. And I think for most chronic issues, if it's chronic, then it means it's, it's coming from something that you're doing on an everyday regular basis. So you need to change your living, your lifestyle, your habits, what you're doing on a daily basis in order to change that chronic condition. And that can be hard, definitely, because most of us have been living the same way for a lot of years, for most of our lives, I mean, creating habits. And if you've ever tried to make the New Year's resolution and then it doesn't happen, you, you know how hard it is to make changes in your habits. But having a reason, finding your why, and often when you make it not about you, like if you have a chronic condition, it, it can affect things like fertility, like it did for me. Uh, you know, it, it definitely made getting pregnant more difficult for me. And I talk to experts like Amy Raup and Dr. Viva Ram, and they talk about how autoimmune can affect fertility. And not that it means that you can't get pregnant, just that you can have challenges and it can make it a little bit tougher if you're not addressing your overall total body health. And so maybe- yeah. If it's hard for you to do it for yourself, like, are you doing it for your children or your friend or for your work or for, you know, sometimes, especially women need, you know, uh, somebody else to say that they're doing it for that. They just, they won't do it for themselves because they're giving to everybody else. They won't make the time to, for the self-care. But if you say this isn't for you, this is for your children or your unborn children or for your husband who, you know, needs you or whatever it might be, even your work, like all of this affects brain clarity and mental health. Um, like find what it is that motivates you and your why and, and use that to help drive you to make changes. I'm so glad you brought that up because that's one of the biggest things I have learned in my work on myself with chronic health conditions and with clients um, and with just people in my community have written in these unbelievable stories and started up a dialogue is that there's such a lack of self-love in people with not everybody, but in most people with chronic health conditions. And so they're not motivated because they don't feel they're worthy of good health or that, you know, they're worthy of being taken care of or taking the time out to, you know, exercise and properly hydrate and cook those nourishing meals and sit down and really savor them and eat them in a slow way that promotes digestion. And uh, when you see that switch in people is usually when you see, and it doesn't always need to happen. Like you may not have gone down a self-love journey to heal yourself. Um, you may have just been committed and had, you know, a certain amount of perseverance, but that helps tremendously when you can think about the why, but also think about, do I not care enough about myself or think that I'm worthy at the core of taking this kind of time for myself? And can I work on that? Because if I could fix that, maybe this all wouldn't be so hard. Maybe it would come a little bit more naturally for me to take time out for meditation or, you know, taking my supplements yeah. and things like that. And I agree with that. And I think this term self-love is really difficult. And that term hasn't resonated for me before. And I'm trying to think of um, what it is because it is hard. It's like self-love is hard for everybody. Whether you have a chronic condition or not, you have this ego in your mind back there saying, you're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not thin enough. You're not pretty enough. You're not rich enough. You're whatever it is, you're not enough. And everybody has it. And so like, where, where does confidence come from? And how can we gain more confidence? Um, and I think, especially when it comes to acne, you know, you can stand there in the mirror and spend so much time criticizing yourself. And same with if you're carrying excess weight or, um, I mean, so many different things, it can turn into a lot of self-criticism. Right. With and it's like a weird chicken and the egg problem because like I have mild Hashimoto's, but 
the fatigue element of having thyroid issues means that you're, you know, you want to be somebody who pops out of bed early to go exercise. And the reality is you're like dragging yourself out of bed and fighting it tooth and nail. And so there's a lot of self-loathing that actually comes from symptoms themselves, because you're looking in the mirror, like I'm ugly, or the beauty magazines tell me I shouldn't have skin like this, or people that are, you know, carrying excess weight or, if they're just feeling lazy, you know, these all, or, or even people who are experiencing anxiety and depression symptoms are like, what is wrong with me? Why am I depressed? Or why am I such a frantic, you know, anxious person? Yeah, I'm not worthy of love. There's something wrong with me. Meanwhile, that very symptom is the thing that if they felt a little bit, you know, more confident as you're talking about might help them to kick. So it's very and, hard. <laughs> well, and so one of my things that really made a difference for me was I decided that all that time that I spent criticizing myself was really selfish, that it was just time spent on myself that was not benefiting anybody. It wasn't benefiting me. It wasn't benefiting, you know, anybody. And so I decided I was going to take that energy that I was putting into myself and try and put it somewhere else in service for other people. So, you know, when anybody tells me that they're suffering from cystic acne, you know, if you can like put a sheet, a, a pillowcase over every mirror in your house or put a post-it note that says like in service on it. And every time you go to look at your skin or pick at your skin or criticize yourself or whatever it is, you do something in service for somebody else, whether that's write somebody a gratitude email or, you know, phone a friend who you haven't talked to in a while and say something nice to them um, or volunteer. If you can volunteer your time and see that you're impacting somebody else and that you're value is not based on your skin or your weight or any of these types of things, but um, like the light that you have to offer to others, then I think that that's one way to start building more confidence and more self-love is loving yourself for things that are not just based on skin or, or these other types of things. I haven't heard that put in that way. And I feel like that is incredibly helpful because we do all have that certain amount of time that we spend on negative thoughts and negative beliefs and negative energy. And whether that's physical appearance or otherwise, how selfish is that in a way, right? You could take that and do such powerful things with that energy and that time spent. So whether it's for healing something yourself or just in general, you know, not having all that negativity is, uh, it's, it's really powerful. So I, I like right. that. Or maybe you spend that, you shift and every time you catch yourself and you do something for self-love, like whether it's a self-love uh, mantra or a moment of meditation or something that is not in order to fix or cure or do or whatever, but just purely out of love. So, you know, if you have skin problems, don't consider your self-care, self-love moment trying to do face masks or something yeah. like that, yeah. you know, like do something totally different that helps to decrease your stress levels um, that is very like nourishing and caring like think about yourself if if you were your own child uh how would you care for you and if you heard your child saying those things that you say to yourself if you heard them telling themselves that what would you say to them you know you yeah. you wouldn't want them to to say those mean things because a lot of us are really mean to ourselves but all of that goes into our overall health and our and our our chronic health, how we are over a long term, going back to, you know, how it's difficult to make changes and how long does it take? I think looking at it as this is a lifestyle, you know, the, this is not, I'm going to do it for a certain amount of time and give up. Like this is, I'm going for it. And if I fail one day, that's fine because tomorrow is the next day and I'm still in this and it's still, 
It's not a diet. This is just life. And this is what life is going to look like. Now I'm going to be making healthier choices, you know, in my nutrition, healthier choices in my life. And whether that is just starting to get more leafy greens into your diet. I, I think that that's a great first step is can you shoot for six cups of leafy greens every single day? And maybe it doesn't happen every day, but it's an easy, you know, thing to kind of set your mind to, okay, I'll put it into a smoothie, some spinach into a smoothie in the morning. Okay. I'll, you know, add, uh, greens to this sandwich that I was going to eat. Oh, well, I didn't get my six cups yet and it's already dinner time. So I better make myself a big green salad with lots of vegetables in it for dinner and just making it a piece of your lifestyle, something you're thinking about, okay, am I getting enough vegetables in? Am I getting enough leafy greens in? Then that can start to shift the way that you eat and you have less room in your diet for things that you know, or maybe not feeding the best bacteria in your body or, are you know, really servicing you and your health. I think when we focus on, oh, I can't eat that. I can't eat that, that, that can create an unhealthy relationship to food and it can make food. There's bad food, good food. And that's not what we want to do because I'll eat any food, you know, when I want to. Um, but the majority of the time I try to eat clean and get my leafy greens in and get lots of vegetables in. And so I want to ask you about the period of time when you first started and you were still in the throes of cystic acne. Did you find that you had to be a bit more restrictive in the beginning before you could kind of, you know, eat what you wanted when you wanted, but mostly eat clean, you know, and, and how long, I mean, every body is so different that, you know, nobody should this as what their experience would be, but just as a general, it probably took me a good few months of being really strict. And then like six months until, um, my skin was much, much clearer. And I'd say probably a full year before I could do what we call eat clean, play dirty, which is now, you know, I can eat those other foods and my gut is strong enough and healed enough that they don't affect me. And I I think it just depends on where you're coming from, how much healing your body needs to do. But I know that this works and I've seen it with thousands of our clients that we've helped in now to heal their guts and to transform their health and their lifestyle that I know it's not always easy and, um, but you can do it and just, you know, find your communities that are supporting you start small, like, you know, making small steps over time, add up to big changes. Yeah. And, and focus one by one, like getting leafy greens in. And then once you're in a rhythm of getting in those leafy greens, then start to think about getting a diversity of different vegetables or ingredients into your body. So at Sakara, if you're doing our signature nutrition program, which is delivered nationwide, then you're getting upwards of 70 different plant species in your meals each day. So you know, I'm not expecting you to go to the grocery store and to be cooking with 70 different ingredients every day, but just, you know, for reference of like thinking about, okay, I'm going to diversify my diet of what I'm eating. Most people eat seven to 12 different types of plants each week. You know, if you can start um, just adding in, buy a fruit or vegetable you've never tried before at the grocery store, like these little steps will start to make big impacts on your body over time without you even realizing. That is a very popular uh, Wellbe show and podcast uh, episode with Dr. Will Bolsowitz, whose whole thing is like the answer to everything is plant diversity for a strong gut. And I, of course, had known that in theory, but it really wasn't until our interview that I realized how many different nutrients each plant has and how certain good bacteria dies without that particular thing. So you're killing off things you really want to stay alive when you limit or get into habitual eating. 
And so it was such an inspiration. Of course, you know, the week after the interview, I was on fire and things kind of settled down from there. But I was like ransacking my fridge and my pantry and trying to, you know, how many different plants can I get in this like scramble or this salad or whatever? It was a really fun challenge. And it also just makes the food so much more flavorful because you're putting things together and experimenting with, you know, you may not have done that in the past. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's have one of my favorite lessons I've learned. Have you seen the documentary? I think it's called Kiss the Ground. Yes. Kiss the Ground yes. the Earth, yes. something I like that with Woody Harrell. And what they talk about there is about, you know, regenerative farmers and Sakara works with a lot of regenerative farmers. They plant a, a lot of different types of plants on their, on their farm. So instead of monocropping, which is really just killed our soils um, because they're only feeding a certain bacteria and not other bacteria. And really it's the microbes, the same way that the microbes are the key to our health and our microbiome, which is the epicenter of our overall body health. The microbes are the key to soil health and how we keep that soil healthy is through diversity. You know, it's, it's very similar. I thought that was really interesting that you know, it's not just our bodies that need the diversity, but our soils too. It just shows you how much of a real cyclical experience it is. Like if ecosystem we for a healthy gut, after watching that film, I felt like, okay, so our gut inside of us is our soil, right? Like the earth, if it's a body, the gut is the soil. And so everything that the soil needs our guts need and vice versa. Yeah, it was, it was really good. Anybody that is interested should definitely check it out. I think it's on Netflix or Amazon prime. Yeah. I think I watched it on Netflix. It was great. And the funny thing is the, sh the film was made mostly around as a climate change solution, um, this agricultural biodiversity. Um, but you know, the byproduct of that is just such more nutrient dense soil and therefore more nutrient dense food for us to eat. And then our guts become so much more uh, diverse and healthy. And it's just like this, again, cyclical, beautiful thing that happens. And anytime you're not sure if we're all the earth and the earth is us, that film really makes a great point that, that we are. We've talked a lot about food and diet nutrition because that's at this point your specialty and one of the main ways that you healed your cystic acne and other gut related symptoms, which included mental health uh, symptoms as well. But were there any other you know, important lifestyle changes that you made in that process that weren't related to your diet that you wanna share? Yeah, I think that practice just around shifting my mentality was really huge. I'd say that that is the biggest thing that I did um, was the food and managing my my mental stress. Um, I think even now today, you know, going with my pregnancy and fertility journey, I had kind of gotten into a place where I was pretty comfortable with the health of my gut and my digestive system and my skin, but my body needed even more in order to come to a place where you can create another life. You have to be overflowing with life that you can give it to another being. And I was, you know, still living in New York city, building Sakara, building a business. We have over 200 employees. Now I was still living that fast paced lifestyle. I was definitely eating better. And I had my body to a place where uh, my skin had cleared up, my yeast infections were gone, my anxiety was gone, I was feeling really good. But, you know, that underlying autoimmune condition was still there. And in order to get pregnant and give life to another being, I had to care for my body and myself even more. So that meant removing different types of stressors. Normally I, I would have one cup of coffee a day, which for a lot of people that doesn't sound like very much, but my body is sensitive and just, you know, it's physical constitution. It couldn't handle the one cup of coffee a day, plus all of the run, run, run of lifestyle, the amount of sleep I was getting. So I had to cut out the coffee. I had to cut out alcohol, you know, normally we say eat clean, play dirty. And so if you want to have your glasses of wine or your cocktails, like that's fine. You find your balance point. But 
for me, it's, it's like the same when I was first trying to clear my skin and heal my body, I had to go a little bit, swing a little bit further onto the healthy side. And so that was the same. I had to remove the alcohol altogether, really make sure that my blood sugar stayed stable. So really sticking to my Saqqara meals and nutrition philosophy more strictly than I normally would. And this was all in the couple of months leading up to getting pregnant, you're saying? I mean, for me, I worked on getting pregnant for over a year. I went through a miscarriage. I had to heal. And then like at first I got pregnant on the first try and I thought, oh, all of this is great. All of this is easy. Went through a miscarriage, had to have my body heal and then struggled then the next time to get pregnant. And I think it was a number of different things, but I I think that really I just needed to go back to the original like how to heal my body, what, how we started Saqqara and those philosophies and really stick to it the same way that we were saying before of like, you just need to dedicate some time in the beginning and allow that time for your body to heal. And so it was, you know, making sure I was getting enough sleep, actually reducing the amount of exercise I was doing, uh, doing more like yin yoga and things that were really, you know, not too harsh or masculine or yang energy and um, just give my body that time to relax and de-stress and feel safe. And when your body feels safe, then a lot can happen. And so I, I think that a lot of women who go through fertility struggles that treating their bodies the same way as if they're treating a chronic illness or something like this can be beneficial to them as well. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I've seen that a lot as someone, you know, my mid thirties, that's a lot of friends are struggling. And I think it's just so great to have a tool belt the way that you do with the Sakara program, but also some of the things that you learned about mindset and learned about what really, you know, impacts the gut as far as stressors and other things, hydration. And like you said, if you have some chronic symptoms or an illness, you have to be pretty diligent and dedicated in the beginning, but then you get to a maintenance part, right? Where you can, you know, eat clean, live dirty, enjoy yourself a little bit here and there. um, As long as the majority of your choices still nourish your body. And, and that's really, our bodies should be able to handle some toxins here and there. It's just yeah. when it's overloaded with them that the issues come, right? So if you've got that stable, healthy, sound gut, then these little things shouldn't really tank it or cause a full-blown, you know, cystic acne situation. And then you have maybe something else. You get a little too loose with that. And so some of these chronic symptoms begin to flare up again, or a full-blown different chronic illness comes, or a fertility journey, you know, begins, you still have the tools that you had initially that healed you and you can just revisit those. It's not like you need to start from scratch or you're totally lost as to how to kick yourself back into that gear. You just, you know, you need to, you know, go back to that dedicated period. And, you know, now you have a beautiful baby boy and you might be able to, you know, eat clean and live dirty in a couple of months when you've emerged from, new mom, you know, exhaustion and and fog. And if 10 years from now, there's something else, you can return to those tools. So I think when you've got the tools, you also have confidence that you won't be lost should something happen. It's almost like having a bodyguard. You're like, I don't need to take this person everywhere, but I know that they're there and I can always revisit or bring them along if I feel that's needed for even just a week. You know, if you feel you need to reset um, it is I know a that- pendulum, right? Like sometimes you're going to be on the play dirty side a little bit more. You're going on vacation. It's somebody's birthday and you're celebrating or you're with your in-laws and you don't have control over what you're eating. <laughs> and then, you know, you maybe when you go back home, you swing to the other side and you're a little bit more diligent about your food and your lifestyle and what you're eating and how much you're sleeping then in order to get back to your balance point of where, you know, you feel good. And what we call that is body intelligence, like being able to tune in to understanding when you're falling out of balance 
and when you're in that place of balance and it goes back to looking at your vital signs like how is my digestive how is my menstrual cycle how are my sleep patterns how you know all of these different things tell us about how we're doing and so checking in with ourselves is a great way to start to tune into that body intelligence so that you don't need to read you know nutrition facts labels or count calories or do any of those things but really just use your body as your guiding voice to tell you what is right for you individually. To bring it full circle to one of the first things you talked about is like, did I poop today? And was it a normal, great poop? And that is just a great body intelligence way of knowing that things are working very well or not working as well as they should be. And then obviously your body throws all of these other signs to you, like your skin and you know, digestive feelings and mental symptoms like anxiety and depression, et cetera. So listening is just one of the best, easiest ways to kind of get out in front of something. And uh, it seems like you've had, you know, a decade to develop, you know, great body intelligence. <laughs> um, and I'm sure that it goes into all of the work that you guys do with Sakara too. So yeah, and sharing all of that. Of course. And I'll just mention on top of our nutrition program, we offer lots of different types of supplements and functional snacks um, in order to help, you know, bring the power of plants to support you in whatever health journey you're on and whatever needs you might have. So I definitely recommend checking out our website, sakara.com to see what we have there really like our entire business is just here to help support people on their own health journeys um you know it started with my story and danielle's story and our own health journey and now as i've said we've helped thousands hundreds of thousands of people on their own health journey yeah we're we're here to support you and we'd love for you all to be part of our community yeah welby is a sakara partner so i will find i think we have a special code or something I'll put in the show notes and on the article, but uh, I've tasted it and tried it myself. And I know there's such a variety for people that, you know, are wherever they are in their journey, they can start with some of the things that are in, you know, more of your snack category, just to kind of feel it out if they're not committed to, you know, fully changing out their meals, but also it's just such a great way to get started because even the laziest person can really (laughs) get healthy from, you know, not having to go buy 70 plants, as you said, but perhaps start with you in that. And the modern, very busy lifestyle that we lead, it's just very hard to get the amount of plant diversity and uh, nutrient dense food that you guys are really thinking about and um, putting into your meals. So definitely check that out. All Wellbe listeners that haven't, I think you'll, you'll really enjoy it. And if you have a chronic health issue, I would say you'd probably have a great benefit from doing it from that perspective as well. So use it as medicine or just use it for flavor and, you know, ease and, and all of that. So, and feeling and looking great, obviously. Yeah. And we have great probiotics Our probiotic contains prebiotics and enzymes in them. So if maybe you're not ready to jump into fully changing your diet and lifestyle, just simply adding in a really high quality, great probiotic is a great place to start or our foundation supplement packets. Uh, They contain food-based multivitamins, vegan omega made from algae, uh, your macro minerals, and they include that probiotic in the packet as well. So those are great places to start to- Yeah. um, make an impact on your health in an easy way. That's a great suggestion. Yeah, I think literally there's something for everyone with everything going on. So check it out. Whitney, thank you so much for taking the time and sharing the story. I share a lot about gut health on my platform because I've just learned so much about how it's really the root of everything, but not specifically coming at it from a skin perspective all the time. And so having somebody share their story of just like this happened to me. It could be you. You know, I went from full blown. I never thought I'd be somebody without it to I'm looking at beautiful skin right now, very close up. So there's no way you could be hiding it with anything. And uh, knowing that you are still able to, you know, live a little more freely and have cocktails and do this stuff. And it doesn't come back in some raging way. It's just 
it's just a real testament to the diet and, and therefore the company that you've created, but also the lifestyle and the mindset and the perseverance because um, these changes, they take a lot of resilience and work and commitment. And the timeline that you outlined is actually pretty much exactly what I've seen with either my private clients or people, friends, and lots of well-being community members who have told me about their, their journeys. And I've filmed at this point, maybe like a hundred <laughs> interviews, many of which are stories of full health recovery of a chronic illness. So I've, you know, compiled a lot of these timelines in my head. And I would say, Yours was exactly what I tell people, um, you know, a few months of really strict diligence, six months to see most of those changes and a year to feel like, you know, good as new or, or that, that yeah. those issues aren't, aren't issues for you anymore. So if anybody feels like that's kind of a long time, think about if you have something, you have how a whole long. lifetime, you have a whole right. lifetime ahead to feel good. So dedicate one year. And then think about how great you can feel. After. Right. Or even how long you've spent feeling not great. Right. I mean, how many years oh, sure. were you suffering from the acne before? Many. Right. So many more than six months to a year. Like it's worth it. It's really worth it. And uh, Whitney is a testament to that. So you've already shared so much about it, but the last question I always ask people on the show is how do you get well be? So uh, that's our, you know, website and all of our social channels. And it basically is just what are your can't miss daily practices that when you don't do them, you feel like you're kind of getting away from, you know, it's basically with the tool bell concept we were talking about, but just the real core tools. I get well be by eating my six cups of leafy greens every day by making sure that I hydrate I shoot for three liters of water a day. Sometimes I only get in one liter or not even that, but making that effort to try and uh, really hydrate. I use my Saqqara beauty water drops in them to extra hydrate. They contain all your major electrolytes. And by taking a high quality probiotic every day. And those things help me to feel healthy and feel like my best so that I can shine my light for others. I love that. That's great. I feel very happy that I am also taking a daily probiotic, but because I'm not at home right now, my hydration is a little all over the place. So you've just reminded me, I'm going to go chug a ton of water right after we finish this. I like to fill up a quart jar. You know, I'll just reuse whatever I have that comes in a quart jar. Once it's empty, I put it into the washing, the dishwasher. And then I like to drink out of those quart glass quart jars and just fill them up. And it makes it easy for me to think about how much water I'm getting in a day. That's um, a great suggestion. Tricks are important for this thing because it's very, there's so much to keep track of all day. If you're trying to keep track of eight glasses of water, 10 glasses of water, forget it. Like who could keep track of that? So I had a, I guess a one liter pitcher. And so I just knew that I wanted to fill that up at least twice you know, and, and drink it down every day, but, you know, just simplify, simplify, you know, there's yeah. too much to think about, find whether it's your quart jar or some sort of pitcher, or you can find a glass or metal water bottle. That's a certain size. And, you know, you want to have, you know, two of those or something like that, but, um, hydration is key, whether you're eating it or drinking it, both for that, so both for that wonderful poop that we were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for your but skin and so many poops things. make for great skin and, and happy. Please don't turn I, that into a, a clip that you're sharing on social media. <laughs> I, I won't. It's something I love to talk about. So I'm glad that you like to talk about it too, but I won't, <laughs> I won't <isolate laughs> it. Thank you so much again, Whitney. Um, this has been real honor and I've loved getting to spend a little bit of time with you and thank you for sharing such an amazing story with the Wellby community. Definitely check out sakara.com. Uh, everybody watching and listening to this, because if you haven't tried it already, you may become an evangelist like so many people I know and can't live without it. So thank you again. Thank you.